studying him, he used to say, it's always been the artist who realizes that the future is the present and uses his work to prepare the grounds for it. The artist has a unique outsider perspective. He's not like stuck up this close to the changes that we're seeing, but he's connecting the dots. He's like, he's seeing these trends and these trends and these trends and these trends and finding echoes and overlaps and the pattern that connects. Mm. You know, Isaiah Berlin said, to understand is to perceive pattern. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. Now, increase all the dimensions in this story by one, and you have something like the situation which many cosmologists think may actually apply to us. We are three-dimensional creatures trapped in three dimensions. Three dimensions. We imagine our universe to be flat in three dimensions, but maybe it's curved into a fourth. We can talk about a fourth physical dimension, but we can't experience it. Then everything is quite different. It becomes amazing. And not only do all your senses become more wide awake, not only do you feel almost that you're walking on air, but you see finally that there is no duality, no difference between the ordinary world and the nirvana world. They're the same world, but what makes the difference is the point of view. And of course, if you keep identifying yourself with some sort of stable entity that sits and watches the world go by, you don't acknowledge your union, your inseparability from everything else that there is. The problem of what happens at the edge of the world was solved when people realized that the world was not a flat plate, but a curved surface. The irregularities in the early universe will mean that some regions will have slightly higher density than others. We are the product of quantum fluctuations in the very early universe. God really does play dice.